<laughs> it's blue. You want to know the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Today in backyard welders, Mama always said, don't stick your tongue on the torque. Well, doing a lot of repetitive welding. Currently, I am welding the ends for the V2 CTSV chromoly engine mounts. But I'm trying to find the settings that I like for this specific weld. So that way I can save it, write it down, take a picture of the settings. And every time we do a batch of these, just know automatically what to go to as far as settings. So we're changing and doing a few different things. Um, we've always used the uh, Alpha Tig AHP. And uh, I think I bought my first one about seven or eight years ago when they first came out the new model it has you know your straight current welding and your pulse welding and this is what they call you know a low frequency or slow pulse but the new model actually has a high frequency or fast pulse uh, so that's what we're trying to find settings for first time using it for the past week or so and what we've come to find out with all this chromoly welding and uh, steel welding that we're doing that it's very helpful with stabilizing the arc and also trying to keep some of the heat out of the material that you're welding for instance the the original pulse the slow pulse was capable of one pulse per second to ten pulses per second the high frequency is capable of doing 10 pulse per second all the way up to 200 pulses a second. So that's a huge difference in how many pulses you can get every second. So what it allows you to do is you have your, when you're using the pulse function, so this will be your peak amps, the highest amp that you're allowing the machine to get to. And then you have pulse amps or pulse base. This is your base amperage, also known as background amperage. So let's say you have the pedal pressed all the way down on your welder. And we have our set at 130 amps. It will pulse up to 130 and then it will pulse down to your base amps or your background amps. Uh, there's an equation to all this. Just because it says 130 doesn't mean it's gonna reach 130. It, it takes your main amps, your base amps, and I wanna say the amount of time on for each pulse. You put that into an equation and it gives you an average amperage. It's typically half that depending on where your pulse time on is so if we had it at 50 percent we're at 130 it would uh it would put us at 65 amps with the pedal all the way down uh it's just an average because you are cycling from a high to a low currently we are welding grade 10 m12 bolt to a 3 16 steel flange or washer and we have the settings to 130 amps on our main. Our base amps are 15%. Our pulse frequency is right at 90 hertz or 
90 pulses a second. And then pulse time on is right around 55%. So it will pulse and it'll stay on for 55% of the time. And then 45% of the time it'll be at the base amount. And it'll keep doing this so many, based off of our Hertz, so many times a second. One of the benefits to the high frequency is you have a little bit more control over how much heat you're putting into the material. But also with the higher frequencies, you're able to focus the weld more. So you're able to penetrate the material deeper without putting more heat into it. And you're also able to narrow your weld width or bead width because it concentrates the weld much closer to what you're welding. It, it narrows that. Um, every welder is gonna be different. There's some welders out there that perform at 250 hertz and they work great. Ours seems to be good between like 90 and 120 is where we're finding it's being very smooth. The puddle staying consistent. You can feed a wire in there consistently, not have any speed up, slowed down with your travel speed. It's consistent, just go, 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 go. We'll weld a couple of these and make some adjustments and see how we like it, find a good setting. And then we have a base plate for one of our engine mounts that we can go ahead and do some passes on and find the settings for that. Uh, it's a 3 16 plate with a eighth inch support plate over top of that. So it's a double layer. It's the base plate. 316 this is the overlay plate support plate eighth inch and it will actually the holes line up the slits line up they're all the way through and I'll show you the reason for that in a second and then there's a slit here in this piece but not in this piece what the reason behind that is we wanted a little extra support in this area right here so when we're welding these two plates together we'll do our beads on the outside and then we'll do a bead here to adhere both of these pieces together just for extra safety in case there's any deflection going on here because for instance our cars making 2000 horse and this has to hold it. Here's one that I've already put together, welded together, two pieces. We got beads there, beads there. And the slit in the center, we, uh, we cover that up with our logo cut out of eighth inch steel. We just do a bead on the bottom and the top of the real logo. Now the reason for these slits and the reason why I have them going all the way through is for our gussets for the bar. So not only does this help line everything up, they literally slide into each other, but we put our tube in and it gives us something to weld, not only our tube to the base plate, but to gusset it all together and join all these three pieces together really well it literally locks everything together. So we'll go ahead and make some passes on these um, engine mount uh, washers to subframe. And then we'll make some passes on this and see what we can come up with. Okay, go up a little bit on our uh, our pulse base or our background amperage. That way it doesn't pull so many amps out. That one didn't have enough heat in it. 
clean our tungsten up real quick. Actually, to go up with the pulse frequency, we're going to take it up to about 105. All right, so these are at, let's call it 110 hertz. So just to show you a quick difference, we're gonna cut the, the pulse in half. We're gonna go to 60. And this is at a lower frequency? Yeah, so this is at 60 on the pulse frequency. What's the other one? What was the other one at? About 110. Oh, you can see the puddles are like more defined. Like mm -hmm. actual, the beads. Yeah. I think we might have found our setting for these pieces. I would have to say that 60 is better than 75 in this situation. It didn't put as much heat into it when we were at 60 hertz compared to the 75. Which one is this? This is the 60. This is the 75. And you can tell by the bluing around the weld on the base material. See how all these just have a nice little ring around them. Nothing too far spread. This one's still a little hot. That was our final weld and it started getting a little blue around there in the base material. It starts signifying some heat was spreading in the material. Then you look at our 75 and That was our first weld, not too bad. Second weld started getting some blue in it. Right there, which is almost comparable to the last weld on the 60. And then the last weld on the 75, you see much more blue in it, in the base material. So this was putting more heat into it and it was unnecessary heat because the 60 did just fine. So, looks like the 60 will be our frequency of choice for these pieces. <laughs> All the OCD. All the OCD. Boing! Normally I'd throw these in the jig and use the jig, but the jig obviously has a big piece of metal in the way. You can't get all the way around it. So we had some test pieces of 3 16 that we cut out originally playing around with these as we were developing and designing them. So I took two extra pieces, squared them up, bolted them together. So it'll help keep this material flat and also pull some heat out of it. This is what we can do some passes on next and see what settings we like. This, honestly, because we're going from an eighth inch to a 3 16 it's probably gonna have way different settings than those. Start over here with this weld. Um, as far as settings go, put our main amps at 132. I'm going to take our frequency and put out 100. Our base amps, we put at 30%. And our pulse time on, I'm going to put at 50% and then adjust the amperage accordingly to the material. Boom, boom, boom. It actually didn't weld too bad to start out. It kind of 
gave me a little bit of hassle with uh, a consistent puddle. So we'll go to the other side and uh, make some adjustments. We're gonna go up on the frequency. We're gonna go to 120 and leave everything else the same and see what kind of difference we get. Since we're on a really small edge, I'm hoping that turning the frequency up will help us concentrate the weld where we want it and narrow the bead down and give us a better weld. That's exactly what it did. It definitely narrowed the bead. Almost too much. Clean our tungsten real quick. Get a new tip on it. Uh, let's weld this edge right here. And I'm going to say that was perfect. Damn near perfect. I got a little off on my track. And all that was was simply just went up on the pulse time on just a hair. So we went from 50% to 55%. One major thing is you got to be comfortable when you're welding and I was not comfortable on that pass. Didn't have my hand in a good position for my filler and it screwed me up on a couple. So I'm going to clean my tungsten one more time and finish that weld up and see if I can get more comfortable. You want to keep your filler in your gas while you're welding, but you don't want to keep it so close that it starts falling up or melting on the end of your filler metal. And sometimes when you're focusing on the puddle itself and not where your filler is, that can happen. Way more comfortable on that pass. And you can see it. How each dab of the filler material is the same compared to some high lows, hand starts moving a little weird, mm -hmm. but it's consistent. This probably still a wee bit hot, but you know what? It's cool. Woo! So these are the two plates welded together. I still gotta do that centerpiece right there and put the logo on. After that, where we do the gussets, the tube, and uh, the final washer and bolt. But overall, I think we found some good settings. Uh, be comfortable when you weld, you'll end up with some awesome welds like that. Look great. Um, like that, that's just perfect for this situation. Uh, and I mean, these are not bad welds at all. They're just, you know, you can see inconsistencies in them. And if you have any OCD like I do, it drives me nuts. But there's nothing you can do about it. It's a good material, it's, it's a good weld. It's not gonna have any issues. So practice, practice, practice. It's all about just being under the hood as much as you can and uh, don't be scared to try new things and, and see what works for you and your welding style. And from Pure Fab guys, a happy new year and good riddance to 2020.